Hey, what's up? I'm DJ Six Smith. You're watching the Sit Down. Assy Harrison here with us, Tacoma FD Season 2. Assy, how are you? Hi. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for jumping on today. Pretty weird time, but plenty of time to watch shows just like yours. Yeah. I mean, uh, this, is, this is the modern way of creating content now. <laughs> a whole lot of Zoom. <laughs> a lot of Zooms. Yeah. I had, uh, had somebody hack a Zoom interview the other day, so hopefully that doesn't happen here. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was, it was just two women <laughs> just kind of talking about their week, and I don't know what happened. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> I thought it was coming from the guest Zoom, but it, it was just somebody completely separate from that. It were the, like the lines just got crossed over? Yeah, the lines just got crossed, where it's like they create all these different, you know, numbers for meetings and all that stuff, and it was like I was about to ask a question, and then you just hear these two women talking in the background. It was pretty bizarre. Oh, my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> So why don't we talk about Tacoma FD? Uh, I talked with Steve and Kevin a couple times. Now they're they're absolutely hilarious, and I'm sure you're really having a blast with them. But what's been the best part of the experience so far? Um, yeah, I mean Steve and Kev are the best. They're they're such like champions of actors, and they're just like when I booked the job, I remember being like, dude, these guys are gonna be cool. Like I'd seen Super Troopers and loved it, and I'm just like. I had no idea how cool they are. Like, they're definitely cooler than me. When we went to the upfronts, like, a couple to last year for in New York, we had all, all, all like, gone back to our hotel rooms at, like, really, like, we got to keep going. Should we, like, all go up to my room? I'm like, <laughs> these guys are way cooler than me. Um, but, um, but, yeah, you know, I think they, they're also, like, kind of comedy legends in their own right, and, and, incredible improvisers so you know for me i'm always just like sponging it up and and you know they've put their ten thousand hours in so i know there's so much for me to learn from them and even coming out of the other side of season two like i am so much more confident with my own comedy and improv abilities and yeah it's just a fascinating art to me that genre in particular because it's so it's so exacting and so specific and you know i always say like if you can do comedy you can do anything mm -hmm. and i um i feel that yeah it's really cool because you know they had camped out in the movie world they have a really specific comedic tone a lot of improvisation and it's really worked well on tv the show is really hilarious so when did you realize like all right this is going to be good and like people are going to be down for this? um Honestly, it was like one of those things, like I read it on the page when I was auditioning for it and I was like, this is going to be hilarious. And I think there's just a real appetite for that right now, that kind of comedy and, and you know, um, it's specifically with these kind of like crazy times we're living in, people just like, it's such good medicine to have a laugh and be silly and, and not take things too seriously. And I think that that's also like... Um, Part of what I love about the show too, I guess, I guess I knew, you know, when you're on set, you could just feel how funny, you know what I mean? When our, my day to day, the hardest thing about my job on this show is just not breaking. <laughs> and if that's any testament to how other people will receive it, then, you know, there you go. So, um, so yeah, and I got real excited. It came across my desk, metaphorically speaking. And I was like, oh my God, the super troopers guys, this will be hilarious. And, and it went away for a while and then it came back and it was like, I hate having being one of those actors who was like, I just like felt that was my role. You know what I mean? And I remember like telling my sister and like, you know, I was just like, I just have that feeling. And, um, and yeah, so I auditioned probably five times for it, but got it. <laughs> That's great. So you mentioned like the biggest challenge is basically not laughing on set. What have been some of the surprises of, you know, doing the TV show for the last couple of seasons now? Um, in terms of like comedy and stuff like that? Yeah, in terms of the comedy, in terms of the experience, what are things that you've encountered that you didn't anticipate in terms of, you know, being on a TV show that a lot of people will see each week? Um, I, I think if I could be really honest, it takes like, it's hard work and it's long hours. And, you know, I think my mom and my, my family has this idea that I just like get my hair done and go to like premieres but it's so much of it. It's like, you know, it's 16 hour days and it's like three in the morning and you have a comedy scene and it's like, you have to have energy up there. You, you know what I mean? It's not like I can just mosey in and say something, you know what I mean, on a drama. It's a little, it's like a different kind of, um, of way of kind of keeping your energy at a high level, which is something that is new to me with comedy. Yeah, it's definitely not an easy thing to do. And the improvisation world is really fascinating too. What piques your interest the most about that? Why do you like playing in that world specifically? Um, 
I think because it's like, it takes a very, a highly intelligent, very sharp person to do it well. And I look at my co-stars and, and I mean, like they're, they're incredible. I mean, they've, they've been in the game longer than I have, but they just, um, they're so sharp and they're so funny and it's like, it, it's so specific and it's just, you have to be present in every moment. And um, even for uh, a guy who plays Ike, Gabe Hogan, he's an incredibly intelligent person and he plays like the dumb guy on the show. Mm -hmm. But it just, it, it shows you like, you gotta be switched on and you gotta know what's going on. Otherwise, it's, you know, it shows. Yeah, and you can't just walk into being the dumb guy too. Like it takes a ton of effort to play that type of character. Not enough people recognize that and understand that in comedy. A hundred percent. So what do you remember about watching Super Troopers for the first time? Because that movie is hysterical. Like what were some gut reactions you had when you first saw these guys doing their thing on screen? Oh, I mean, I mean, that's one of those movies. Oh, sorry, my sweatpants are showing. You're um, good. Hey, we're at home. You know, <laughs> do whatever you want, wear whatever you want. As long as it's... Uh, fancy up top um I mean you know I'll, I'll be honest with you I think the first time I saw Super Troopers I was like at a house party mm -hmm. and you know it's like I don't know if this speci this specifics of it but I just know that you know these guys are having fun and you can see that on on state on the screen and you know I I think guys like him and like Jack Lemmon were like my heroes growing up. Like Grumpier Old Men is one of my favorite movies. And I just, they kind of have that same energy of these two really funny dudes like playing off each other. And one of them kind of has that curmudgeon role. And then, you know, they're, they're just they're the best. Yeah, it's an awesome give and take. So who were some of your other influences when you were first getting going with all this? Um, well, I mean, comedically, I'm such a big fan of Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. And then, you know, I, I love the Kates, Kate Winslet, you know, Kate Blanchett. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth was a movie that I saw. And I remember I saw it at a very young age and it just completely just took me over. And I just, you know, um, she's done so many movies that have just seeped into the conscious collective. And I actually just watched Titanic the other night with my sister and we just cried and cried. It's like, um, but she's... She's so good, too. Big fan yeah. of Rachel Weisz. She's mm. right. Yeah, Titanic, you can jump in at any point, and you're going to be emotionally hooked there. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the fact before that, like, you've been in the acting game for a little while now. What have been some of the best parts of the journey so far? And, you know, what else do you still want to do? Oh, man, I think um, my appetite to do more is... is all forever changing and always present you know so I think and you know uh so much of actors I think this is like you know you get what comes your way and it's the right time and stuff like that but um sorry what was the question again just you know what have been the best parts of the journey so far um well I did a movie I'm really excited about coming out uh it's gonna be in theaters later this year called Max Reload and the Nether Blasters and that was with uh, an actor named Greg Grunberg and Kevin Smith played my boss in the movie. And I would say like, that was, that was my first kind of place of realizing like, I think I'm kind of good at comedy. I think mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? Like I've always kind of enjoyed making people laugh, but I think that's when it kind of like, I had a lot of clarity about, you know, where I kind of like belong in this world. How old were you when you really started making people laugh for the first time? Oh, always. I have three From sisters. One, I'm, I'm a middle role. child. So yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm kind of the, the mediator, like class clown, you know. <laughs> um, I always try to bring levity to any situation I can. That's good. That, that's an important role, no matter where you're at. Yeah. So when you think about Tacoma FD, there are so many really popular TV shows. There's a ton of things to watch. Why do you think this one cuts through? What entices people to watch this show? Um, <clears throat> I think anyone with a good sense of humor, and I think right now there's so much, um, so much heaviness in the world that like now more than ever, like people just need a good laugh and to kind of relax and, and let themselves just enjoy life a little bit, um, and kind of forget about all the hard stuff for a second. Yeah, well said. Well, Hassi, thanks for jumping on, uh, really enjoying your work so far, and we'll talk to you down the road, all right? Thanks so much, man. Have a good one. Take care. Sure.